All right, well, morning everybody, and time again for my uh, pseudo cast, and this time for the music, um, I'm really getting burned out on this kind of music, uh, old school dungeon synth, but nevertheless, it's like the, no, let me, let me, let me, let me rewind a second here. No, I actually did try looking into like royalty free music, but I did even, I think I listened to maybe like a, a few, a few seconds of it. It would, and a lot of them had like the had, or excuse me, a lot of them had a fucking watermark like right smack in the middle, right in the middle of the screen. So, not to mention um, not I think um I think what I went with royalty free instrumental music, but it was like super super white bread music, so I wasn't into it at all. And again, the uh, aforementioned watermark that they all have like right in the center of the screen very annoying so but anyway this here is a uh, arcana the liturgia aris moriendi i've never heard this one before so definitely see to my pants here oh and also i'm having a can of v8 energy pomegranate blueberry flavored But uh, otherwise, it was actually a fairly busy night this time. On a whim, I decided to go ahead and do a pinball stream. But um, I, it was also a test stream because, uh, like I said yesterday, a guy named Jake Ryan gifted me a bunch of, bunch of tables from a game called Zachariah Pinball. It's a pinball company based in Italy. So... Um, played a few of them, and last night I just, I thought, I, it just, I got up the, um, hang on, I'm trying to find the right words here. Just totally impromptu, I went ahead and did a pinball stream. Uh, this time I tried to, I tried doing three different games in one session. FX3, uh, Pinball Arcade, and then Zachariah Pinball. Uh, seemed to work all right um, just I think I did like half hour 45 minutes in each in each one of them so I might just go ahead and do that in our future streams so but let me let me sound chest let me sound check this um I'll turn that down a bit. <clears throat> but um, other, um, otherwise, uh, oh, and I didn't, I didn't really write a whole lot of stuff down either, so, um, so much of this I'm just going right off the seat of my pants. Um, and the still playing Bloons Tower Defense Six. But my god, the co-op is just awful. The freaking lag. Um, but yeah, they really they really need to update their net code. I'd say rollback, but oh that it's not a fighting game, so I might be asking too much. So I'd say at the very least they need a the QE games, they need to upgrade that. I mean even even with just a even in just two player mode. The game's still slow as hell. You know, it become it, it'll become a slideshow at times. So, but but yeah, but like I said, still playing it. And um and also uh, I'm still I'm still watching uh, do not eat videos too. And I learned a little learned a little something too about him. Um. I mean, I said yesterday that he's an engineer. Uh, exactly what kind of engineer, I don't know. But I guess he also used to work... Uh, I think he worked uh, He worked for a public housing company. I think that's how he worded it. But uh, one, of his, uh, one of his jobs... And he actually, he actually mentioned this. And it's an actual strategy. But he would drive around in his car looking for... Uh, 
basically a scout in the land, looking for um, looking for good, looking for um, looking for lots that can be uh, kind of a kind of a surveyor. Yeah, that's the word. He want to survey land and determine, you know, and then make a make a determination on how suitable it would be to uh, plop down some buildings there. And uh, an actual strategy that he employed was um, something like car-based surveying. Like he couldn't he couldn't actually get out of his car and like set up the survey equipment that kind of thing. Because uh, if he did that, his competitors might his his competitors might find out what he's up to, like try to cut and try to cut a deal with him and all that. So he had to he had to be secret about it. He had to drive around. He had again. Car base, you know, surveying stuff from his car, you know, again, doesn't want to attract any attention to himself. But yeah, this is like an actual strategy that he did. He didn't want anybody else finding out what he was up to. Um, and he, um, and he actually showed some of the maps that he would put, that, um, that he put, he would, uh, some of the maps that he would put on the, um, the public housing company website. And uh, they were intentionally pixelated. They were intentionally blurry again, uh, for reasons of secrecy. So uh, his competitors, or competitors and any potential protesters, any potential activists, if uh, anybody decided to check out this website, they'd have a hard time reading it because the the maps that he was putting up there were so were so blurry. But yeah, that was. But yeah, that was another. Re he said that was another reason why he did what he did, it's because um, he didn't want the, he didn't want any potential protesters to figure him out. Like if uh, if he set up survey equipment at this particular lot, um, pe you know, people that probably live in that neighborhood might get pissed off and start protesting him and stuff. So. But yeah, aside from that, I don't really know much about him. I just um just from what from what I could glean from watching his uh Franklin videos and his um like Cities, Skylines and Politics video series, I think that's what it's called, but uh He talks about uh he talks about urban planning while using a game called City Skylines. But um uh, but yeah, I don't. I'm so I would I would like to think that at some point he just quit his job because he just got to, he became disgusted with what he was doing. Maybe because he became to the real, realization that all the things that he's done in, during his job has ruined communities, has displaced families and stuff like that. I would like to think that he just saw the error of his ways, um, and he just couldn't do it anymore. So he decided and he decided to. To join the side of right, decided to be a good guy, and you know, and start doing making videos like this. And and um, he also has a Medium account. I just know, I just realized that too. Just like uh, just like Jessica Wildfire, she's a she's an activist, she's a writer, she's also a college professor as well. But yeah, uh, Do Not Eat has a Medium account too. I haven't, I haven't um, uh, I haven't watched. A whole, or excuse me, I haven't read a whole lot of it. I think, um, I think he had one, one I'm looking at called, uh, you, yes, you cannot afford the Hyperloop, the Elon Musk Hyperloop. But yeah, he's, yeah, but yeah, he, he talks about how uh, unfeasible it is and stuff. But yeah, I definitely. Definitely following him on Medium. I guess he has a Twitter account too, but I don't. I seldom use Twitter. I only use it as maybe a, maybe kind of a publisher for my blogs, and that's about it. But otherwise, I don't really go on there for anything else. So. Um. Oh, and um. And I'm, yeah, I'm. I'm kind of. Like I said, I didn't really write anything down, so I'm I'm looking at my uh, 
I'm looking at my YouTube history right now. And, uh, yeah, Joey Diaz, he's a comedian, but he's also a podcaster. He was another guy that I haven't really watched in a long time. I'm starting to watch him again, too. But uh, he's... I said this yesterday, um, but probably uh, my favorite politicians aren't even politicians. Joey Diaz is one of those people. But uh, he's, I mean, he's a comedian. He's no politician, but he's definitely an inmate that could run the asylum for sure. Just like a lot of other people I'm influenced by. Uh, Frank Zappa, George Carlin, Bill Hicks. Um, and various other, various other people that have nothing to do with politics. I guess, uh, one other, uh, one other person who's kind of gray area, Jesse Ventura. I mean, he's, I mean, he, he was a governor of Minnesota. He was also a mayor of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. But, but, uh, he's also, he's also an independent. And he's one of those that, uh, pretty much, pretty much, uh, politicians on both sides can't stand him. And now that I think about it, I think Bill Maher is kind of like that. I think he's, a. Uh, he said he's a Democrat, but uh, he's uh, he's often critical of both sides of the coin. Like he's critical of both uh, Democrats and and Republicans. I mean, he speaks out against both sides, not just the one opposite him. So, man, is that loud? No, not really. Feels like it is. Sure, let me up. Uh, let me turn it down a little bit from my end. Something I can't remember the last time I ever did. Oh, and this, yeah, I'm, I'm looking right at him uh, at my browser. Um, I guess for those that are curious as to uh, where my own politics lie. Again, but let me preface this first by saying that I'm not, I'm not a soapboxer. I don't, I don't like pushing my views onto other people. But by the same token, I freaking hate it when people do it to me. So I took a, I took kind of a, a, a political compass test. I mean, just inspired by all the stuff, inspired by all the uh, political stuff that I've been watching. Again, do not eat. First comes to mind. This is kind of where I lay. Just, and um, when I when I last when I last took this test, I think it was probably at least a year ago. Um, I'm hoping you guys can see my mouse. Here, let me. Yeah, you guys should be able to see my mouse. But yeah, about a year ago, I was actually over here. I was pretty far left, but a little higher up. But now, I'm actually more towards the middle. And uh, I think uh, more towards the middle and a little farther down. And then, I saw this. There's a claim your free political compass certificate. And this came up. Oh, this is kind of funny. This document certifies that Joe Schmo inhabits the left libertarian quadrant of the political compass. But I mean, I want to say I'm that far left, though. I'm a little more towards the middle, but I guess uh, my politics are uh, most close. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, hell, I'm right on Nelson Mandela. So yeah, I was look I was kinda tripping out on this too. Freaking Bernie Sanders. Gandhi's like way the hell over here. Um, Thomas Paine. He's like way down here at the bottom, but he's kinda like me. He's he's actually more towards the middle economically. Like he wants kinda like I guess I kinda like kinda like everybody here. We want some 
We want some economic control from the government, but not too much. Uh, Noam Chomsky, kind of the same thing. Frickin' Ayn Rand's like way the hell over here. She's like the uh, first, I think she's probably the one and only philosopher I've ever read. It was back during the back during the 90s when I lived with my parents, when I lived with my family. So, and, uh, and long story short, I was the only person in my family that had steady income. So yeah, I was, so yeah, I was probably uh, pretty much leaned on pretty heavily. So her philosophy kind of came in handy. I mean, these days, I don't think her poli I don't think her her philosophy really aged that well. I mean, hers was uh hers came out like like in the fifties or sixties or something like that. So a lot has gone on. But yeah, I saw this over here, man. It's like oh my god. A lot of familiar faces here too. Donald Trump, Joe Biden. Um. There's somebody else over here I knew too. Oh, Benito Mussolini. <laughs> He's like right on the corner. And you got like, there's, there's like only four people over here, like Mao Zedong, Joseph Stalin, Robert Mugabe. No idea who he is. Fidel Castro. I think, but I think uh, Castro's kind of in the middle. But yeah, I kind of noticed this too. I mean, there's like a lot of people in this corner, a lot of people in this corner, and there's like a lot of people over in this corner. So it's like, it's like a lot of these people seem to be on the extremes. And then again, you only have. You only have four people over here. Hell, I'd probably say these... I'd probably say these two people here, I don't know who they are. Uh, Nicola Sturgeon? And then... Angela... Angela Menfel? But yeah, I think, personally, I think maybe these... These two here should probably run for president. Because, at least in my mind, this is probably my ideal right here, right, right smack dab in the middle. Like you're not, like you're not too extreme. You're not way up here in one corner. You're not way down here in the other corner. You're like right around the middle. So, but yeah, I guess I'm uh, Nelson Mandela. So let me let me shift it back. That's about yeah I think that's about it um but yeah I'm uh oh wow 1998 I guess I wasn't paying attention to the year yeah this is like a 90s a 90s album so I guess uh, as far as uh dungeon synth goes I guess ideally the 90s are ideal. It's it's my preferred uh, my preferred decade of this kind of music. But again, like I said towards the start at the start of this cast, I'm kind of burnt on dungeon synth. Even during my streams, I'm starting to try uh, I'm starting to play different stuff. So I mean, as as much as I love this genre, I I mean, even I can get burnt. Even I get burnt out. I mean, and I've I've said this in my other cast too. Even with my all-time favorites. I don't know the names of every single one of the songs, or I don't e some of those I don't even know the names of the albums. I mean, all I all I know about it would be the what the album cover looks like. So, but again, in and also with my all-time favorites, I don't like to listen to them 24/7. You know, I like to listen to other stuff too. So. But otherwise, uh, 
I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good here. So, like I like I like I said a few moments ago, I think I've said all the things I wanted to say. So, so gotta get to uploading. So, we're probably looking at, depending on the file size, which shouldn't be much. Um, probably looking at at least an hour to get all these uh, uploaded and processed. And like I said yesterday, I have it isn't it is I upload. There's two places where I upload these: Twitch and YouTube. So. Each of them, you're looking, if for something like this, if the file size is small enough, you're looking at, at best, 30 minutes. So that's at least an hour that it's going to take me to get a, get everything uploaded and all squared away and stuff. So, but otherwise, hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And I uh, should be able to make, and I should be able to make another one of these tomorrow morning. So, <clears throat> but until then, though. Thanks again for thanks again for dropping by everybody and see you next time.